Hello everyone and welcome to A Kind of Crafty Kenzie. Whether you are new or returning, I am so excited you are here. I have some more Valentine's Day DIYs, so let's go. So first off, we are going to start off with this heart from Dollar Tree. Um, it's just a simple, plain wood um, heart. No glitter, guys. So no sanding. <laughs> So I took some of these acrylic pink paints from Walmart and as you can see I just um, took like the lighter pink one and mixed it with some white and then I started applying it to my heart and decided I wanted it a little bit lighter so I just added some more white to the heart and then added some more to my little paint mixture there. And then I just gave this heart one good coat of this paint. And while it was still wet, I just added in a little bit more of the white. And as you can see, I'm just kind of doing like a streaking effect. And I just kept going back and forth with this. Like I would let it dry for a couple minutes. Don't let it get completely dry, but dry enough that the white would actually kind of stand out versus just blend in with the pink. And then just kept doing that until I liked the way it looked. Then I did go ahead and hit it with a heat gun to see if I liked how it looked because when paint dries, obviously it does darken up. So I wanted to see what it looked like. Still didn't quite like it. So I went in and added a little bit more white and then finally got the effect that I was looking for. Then I just took my ruler and one of my darker gray um, color pencils and just drew some shiplap style lines um, vertical on the heart. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my elephant colored um, chalk paint by Waverly and lightly dry brush that on the face of the heart. As you can see, I'm just barely letting my brush hit it and anywhere that kind of got a little heavy, um, I will go ahead and hit that with some sandpaper to lighten it up. I did not want the gray to take away from the different dimension of like the white and the pink but I definitely wanted a little bit of gray in there to incorporate some distressing. So I always like to go a little heavier around the edges and then like a little bit lighter through like the face of the project. Then I just took some of my sandpaper that I get at Walmart um, and I just went around the edges really heavily um, with the sandpaper and then kind of over the face of the heart, like I said, to lighten up that gray. And you can see what it's doing here where it still has that pretty distressed look, but you can definitely see the dimensions of the different colors in this heart. So now I'm just going to take some of these half beads. <laughs> Okay, what these are, I literally bought these on Amazon, and they are they are literally sold just like that. They are like little half beads. Um, I'll link them below as always, you guys, but I did not feel like sitting and cutting beads in half, so I bought them. <laughs> but you could literally take a bead and cut them in half with like miter shears or something, but um, no, your girl was just like, we're just gonna, we're gonna buy them that way. So all I did was glue these around the heart, like in a little bit of a pattern that I liked. I used two different sizes of the little beads, and then I took some of that um, chalk paint, like that gray chalk paint, and I just went around the heart, as you can see, um, and painted them. It did take a hot minute to glue them, and it took another hot minute to paint them, but it's still worth it. So after that dried, then I just went over top of these with some white chalk paint, kind of dry brushed them to soften them up a little bit. As you can see, I did smack my heart a couple times with the brush, but I did go in and touch that up, and you can't even tell I did it. So now I decided to go ahead and incorporate some more of those beads. And you can see my collection here, guys. It's pretty extensive. Um, I love working with these beads and I have found buying them off of Amazon in their natural state like this versus getting them from the Dollar Tree already painted. Those very vibrant colors is a lot easier to just buy them <laughs> like this. So much easier to work with. You get different sizes. Um, you can pick what sizes you want. They come in all different or kind. Blah, blah. They come in a lot of different sizes. And anyways, I, what, what I use is linked in the description box below. 
So then I just went ahead and strung them on some of this um, basic jute twine and kind of kept with like a little bit of a pattern, you know, different size beads on the little hanger like they were on the heart. Then after I got the beaded hanger to the length that I wanted, I just went ahead and gave it like a triple knot at the end of the twine so the beads wouldn't slide off while I'm trying to glue it down onto the sign. As you can see, I left a little bit of extra twine on either end so that I had a little something to glue down to the back of the sign and then I just used that little piece of popsicle stick to kind of like reinforce it. I gotta be really honest with you guys about this project. It literally took me weeks to make. This was one of the first Valentine's Day DIYs that I created and I had it painted and I had the beads up along the side and then I paused for multiple weeks because I just didn't know what to do with it. So then finally, I just decided to try something completely different. So you guys know how I make my bows normally, you know, the basic like little two loop bow with a little dovetailed and you know, pretty, pretty normal. I just wasn't feeling it for this. I don't know. I didn't want any words on this sign. Um, I just, I, I did not know what to do with it. So like I say, it literally was painted and laid in my craft area for probably two or three weeks before I finally was like, you know what? We're just gonna roll with something different. We are gonna give our hand at one of those crisscross X messy bow, I don't know, whatever you wanna call it. Um, it's definitely like an X bow. As you can see, I just chose a whole bunch of different ribbons that would match this sign. And then I cut them down how I liked them, placed them in an X over top of each other. But then I call it a messy bow because it kind of goes here, there, and everywhere. Now this bow is definitely hard for me to create with my OCD, very symmetrical brain because I was trying to keep all my ribbons in order <laughs> and trying to keep everything gathered where it needed to be. But as you can see, we finally made a compromise and I think it turned out really cute. I'm excited to do a different bow, like a different style bow like this. But as you can see, then I just took some of wire, tied it around the bow with a little piece of, or a little, um, bead in the middle to correspond with the rest of the sign i chose to leave the hanger natural color and there you go there you have it so <laughs> it's just kind of crazy how like you have like a really good creation in your mind but then you just can't finish it so i just set it aside like i said and let my brain kind of marinate and this is what i come up with let me know in the comments if you are what you new guys to my think. channel today i just want to take a second and introduce myself hello and welcome my name is mackenzie aka kenzie and i am so glad that you are here today if you love everything to do with diy and crafting upcycling turning trash to treasure and some shopping hauls then you are in the right place go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn your notification bell on you can also find me over on instagram and on facebook all the links are in the description boxes and in my bio this is a super simple diy i just wanted to show you guys what i decided to do with these cute little pale pink buckets that i got from the target dollar spot a couple weeks ago i included them in a haul video so i definitely wanted to incorporate them to show you guys what i did with them that i don't just buy stuff and put it in a cabinet and just let it sit there <laughs> so as you can see i just went ahead and put some floral foam from the dollar tree down inside of them added some of these pretty little white wildflower picks also from the dollar tree then took some of this this um, gray and white gingham ribbon and attached it to the little bucket. I did have to put some little spots of hot glue here and there on the bucket because the ribbon just kept sliding down but you can easily just pop that ribbon off and then that glue will come right off as well. Um, and you can change these flowers out all year round, like if you want. You could leave these up and then just, like I said, change the floral. You can even change the ribbon. You could even paint the buckets if you wanted. They were only a dollar, same as they are at Dollar Tree. But my guest bathroom is actually done in like a little bit of like blush pink touches here and there. So these incorporate very well in there for like the spring and summer. But that's it, so simple, and they're gonna be up on a shelf, so I didn't worry about covering that phone, but I really thought these are not adorable. So this next DIY is also super simple, and it is just how I'm gonna give my touch to um, an already adorable little sign. 
So I got this from the Dollar General and it was $2.50 and and I absolutely loved it because it is a little sling back so it can stand on its own and the little sign has like the little um, definitions or slits in them as you can see and the little hearts pop right off so I could definitely use those as well. So I just went ahead and kind of gave it a little bit of a sand job to lighten up that black and red paint because as you can see I'm going to cover it and I'm covering it with the Nimbus and then I was going to try to get that glue off of there but I decided what's the point I'm just going to put the hearts right back on it so I did go ahead with the Waverly Ballet slipper and cover these little hearts that came on it and then just reattach them exactly where they were before that way they covered up that little glue mark then I went ahead and added some stitching in white around my little hearts. Um, I love the stitching for Valentine's Day. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but it's definitely mine right now. So then I took some of this brown jute twine and I got a little out of frame here, you guys. I apologize. Sometimes when I get really into something and I want to make sure it works out good, I forget that I'm filming and that I need to stay in frame. But anyways, you get the gist. I just wrap the twine around the sign, kind of in a crisscross everywhere kind of look, and then just hot glue the ends on the back like so. These little stickers that I am using I got from Hobby Lobby. I absolutely love these. They are so cheap and then they're like always on sale and if not you can use a coupon for sure which you guys I heard that that's ending at the end of February. Have you guys heard that? That they're taking away the 40% off coupon? Um, bummer. That was like one of the best things about Hobby Lobby, but, um, I guess what it is, what it is. But anyways, then I just took some of this, um, light gray chalk paint and just went over the sign a little bit. I did choose to do it after I put the twine on because I wanted the twine to have like a little bit of that gray on it as well. So as you can see, it just barely touched here and there, a little bit on the hearts, a little bit everywhere, but I wasn't worried about it even covering up the stitching because it would age just like that. So then I just went ahead and put the little sticker down. I put a little Mod Podge on top of it to reinforce it. And this simple little upcycle sign is all done and I absolutely love it. I think it's so pretty. It matches my decor. You could leave this out all year round, but let me know what y'all think. Yes, that is a Dollar Tree canvas that I already hacked part of the middle out. So I knew I wasn't going to use this for anything looking like that. <laughs> so I decided to go ahead and remove the canvas completely from the frame, which I did very carefully with a knife. So if you talk to my husband, make sure you let him know that all my fingers are still attached and I did a good job. <laughs> So then I took some of this plaster chalk paint, which I'm absolutely loving by Waverly. And originally I just wanted to give this like a whitewash look, but as you can see, that frame y'all is yellow. <laughs> so I knew that was not going to work. So then I said, well, we might as well just give it a kind of like a full coverage look because I definitely don't want yellow coming through. Ew. I don't even know why that's yellow but anyway so that's what I did I just gave this frame a good coat of the plaster chalk paint it did however definitely need to be distressed so I took some of this castle gray chalk paint this is by the folk art um, it's another one of my favorite chalk paint brands that I use you can get it at Joanne Fabrics. That particular little bottle I got at Hobby Lobby, but I recommend checking out Joanne Fabrics paints, especially when they're on sale. So you can get a bigger bottle. But anyways, um, then I just kind of went over this with that and gave it some nice distressing. Now I am going to take this box of candy. I had to buy a box of candy and I had to eat all the candy just so I could have the heart. No, I'm kidding. Um, it was obviously left over and broke and old. So I just decided to use it. And what I was doing, as you can see, I was using it as like a guide to make a heart because I probably couldn't shape a heart on my own. I missed that day in kindergarten, apparently. But anyways, I am using these little wood slices that are actually from my backyard. Just another one of the perks of living in the woods. But I know that you can buy these on Amazon and other places. Um, but these are from my backyard that my husband chopped up for me because he is awesome like that. So guys this project makes me laugh because this is another one of those duh ones where my brain just did not catch up with my hands or i don't know what's happening but 
as you can see what's going on i took the little piece of like the wax center like that little overlay thing from the box of candy i thought that maybe my hot glue wouldn't stick to it as much as it did and then i just went around it and made like a heart shape but when i tried to take it off it it was stuck fast so i'm like well that stinks but that's okay i'll be very very ginger but it broke anyway so <laughs> it definitely it's hard to hot glue those teeny tiny little pieces of wood together um there's not a lot to work with so i just reshaped it and i was able to do that without the candy box insert so anyways i reshaped it and then very gingerly tried to pick it up and whoops there it went again so my heart got smaller and smaller as the project went along but then finally my brain caught up with the day and i got out my silicone mat which is intended for this exact reason and i decided to piece it together on top of that then i brought out my tools which would be my um, hot glue or my what's that thing called popsicle stick and my scissors and hot glue and I made little teeny tiny reinforcements <laughs> so as you can see I was able to gingerly flip it over and then go ahead and glue down little tiny slivers of popsicle stick that I cut that you would not see it on the other side of the heart but it would hold these pieces, hopefully reinforce them enough together. So, oh my goodness, <laughs> just don't pick this sign up and look at the back if you come to my house. So anyways, then I took some of this really pretty, it's almost like a rosy color pink um, ribbon. It's satin, as you can see, it has a little bit of shimmer. And I just sized it where I wanted it and ran it through my little heart, ran it up through the frame, as you can see, and tied some loose knots until I had it very even because after all that, that heart was not going to hang wonky. So when I finally had it placed and knew that it was nice and even, everything was hung good and straight, I did apply a little bit of hot glue to the top of the frame to kind of just give that ribbon a little bit of security so it wouldn't slide around and everything would stay in place um this was definitely a very delicate little project but i wanted something super rustic looking and i really do like how it turned out in the end it was a headache to get here but i liked it now obviously i wanted this to stand up on its own um so i did go ahead and put some of those little tumbling towers on the back i didn't bother painting them it's up on a high shelf in my home and you're not allowed to pick this up and turn it over so <laughs> there you go this next project is so super simple and i was inspired by this by a picture on pinterest i'm not quite sure what they used like to make their people out of i'm choosing to use the tumbling tower blocks because that's what i have and i thought it'd be super simple that way but um i don't know what they originally used maybe just like um like a like long rectangular block of wood or something but whatever you have would work so as you can see, I am just attaching these little tumbling tower blocks together by just gluing them like on the wide side down. And then you're going to take the ends and glue them together like so. I chose to do three people because it's going to represent my daughters. A lot of the times when you see these, it's only two people to represent like a couple. Um, but I am going to put this in my girl's bathroom and I wanted all three of them like to represent them. So this is also something that you could totally leave out all year round and it would look perfectly fine. So after I had all those tumbling tower pieces put together the way I liked, I made sure that they were all different heights because my girls are 10, 8, and 4. So they're definitely not all the same height. <laughs> so after I had those all attached to the length I liked, I just went ahead and covered them in the plaster chalk paint. And then I did the same for these larger blocks. These are like the size of like the original Jenga game. Um, it's not the original Jenga game. I have no idea where those came from, but I have them. But you could totally use like those little small tumbling tower blocks to make their little stand as well. Then I did cover one of these little hearts from the sticker packs that you get from the Dollar Tree with the ballet slipper paint by Waverly. And then I just went ahead and attached my little people together like you can see, and then attached them to the little stand. And to do that, all I did was glue the two pieces together like that, and then glue down my little people on top. 
so so easy i wouldn't even need to explain this to you guys but what else are you gonna do while you watch this besides listen to me jabber so <laughs> i got these beads from amazon these were a mistake as you can see there isn't a second hole so i can't ever use them for like my garland or anything so i thought these were perfect to put on my little people as their little heads but the bigger one did not fit on the two people to represent like my middle and youngest daughter because it, it just it didn't fit on there with the other ta blocks like up beside it you, you know what i mean so I had to go in with some other beads and just attach those and paint those. Then I attached my heart right like in the center where I thought it looked nice. And then all I did was take some jute twine and kind of wrap it around the heart like so. Um, I didn't make it to where like all their little hands were coming like you see with the two people because I didn't really know how I wanted to do that with the three people. So I just took the twine and kind of wrapped it around the heart. I still think it's super adorable. And then I just glued it to the back. And that's it. This is such a simple little project and I think it turned out so cute. It was so inexpensive to make and I absolutely love it. And like I said, you could leave it out all year round. Oh, I made a bow. Look, I surprised myself. I thought I was done. So <laughs> I did, since I didn't have the little hands gather in the front of the heart, I did make a little teeny tiny jute twine bow and just attached it <laughs> to the heart. This next project is definitely another upcycle. As you can see, I purchased this little love sign from Walmart a few, few, few years back, but obviously I'm not loving these colors anymore. So what I'm doing here is just, I ripped off that um, really tacky, <laughs> plasticky burlap bow. And then I used my heat gun to like melt the glue that was left over and then just scraped it off with my scraper. Then I decided to go ahead and disattach these. I thought it would make it easier to paint them. I didn't worry about that boo-boo there because I'm literally just going to attach it back together. Then I poured out paint like I was gonna paint the walls and had to add some back in the jar because <laughs> I don't know. I guess I can't judge my paint. I I, I don't know what I do sometimes, y'all. But anyways, so after I get scooped back in, I go ahead and get this plank um, covered with the pink ballet slipper by Waverly. You could totally make this with Dollar Tree products, you guys. Um, they always have like the tag version um, of whatever season we're in. They have like the tags out where I... I've used them before. I just wanted to use this up because I had it and it's kind it's smaller and I just I wanted to use it. But anyways, um I did cover that second plank with the castle by folk art. It's a nice it's a really pretty gray. It's a little bit lighter than the elephant, but not quite as light as like the steel or the um silver lining. So and I I didn't have Nimbus at this point, or you know that'd be Nimbus on there, but this was made before I got Nimbus. Anyways, then I took this paint marker and I did a little stitching effect on this. I did do a little bit different. I kind of did like the long line, short line type style. Um, and I really, really liked it. I thought it was really pretty how it came out. I am going to be hanging this on my front door. So I wanted it to be a little bolder. I don't know if those lines really made it bolder, but in my mind they did. So we'll just go with that. Then I just took some of this ribbon from Hobby Lobby. This ribbon always gets me a ton of questions, so it is linked below with all the information for it. It's listed as white, but I call it the chameleon ribbon because I have made multiple different signs with this, different color signs as well, and this ribbon has blended right in. It is the most interesting ribbon I've ever seen, and it does not look white in person. It is the coolest. I definitely need to get some more because I'm like out of it, and I love it. Um, so anyways, I made a simple bow, as you can see, then just took some white twine that I have, tied it around to attach it, dovetailed the ends, and then attached it to my sign. Then I decided that it did need like some kind of um, something in the middle, so I went ahead with one of my buttons from my very 
embarrassing lar- embarrassingly large stash of buttons and <laughs> I just took some of that pink twine that I have from Amazon and just finished the button with like the little threading in there. Um, this has made my aunt so proud and she's like my crafting idol. So anything to make her happy. I love you. <laughs> so this is for you. <laughs> and then I just went ahead and attached it to my bow. Then I took some of these stencils that I got from the Dollar General and I loved it because they had these little words on them so I didn't have to stencil them out by <laughs> letter and I chose to do my welcome on here because obviously this is hanging on my front door so we need to welcome and I love how I kind of just put it down there. It was something different but then I did have a couple, I had a little bit of bleeding, no big deal. I just hit it with the heat gun and then went over it with the ballet slipper and then kind of went over um, the stitching lines with my paint marker because it did hit some of that no biggie and then I put love on the other plank in the pink and I just thought this was adorable because it's like it hangs on your front door so you're welcoming but it's Valentine's Day so you're welcoming love and oh my goodness sometimes my brain just impresses me so much with what it comes up with so then I did the same thing I decided to just touch up all of my little stitchings to kind of make them pop a little bit more then I did go ahead and cover the entire sign with some Mod Podge because it is going to hang on my front door and I wanted to reinforce it so this last project, I definitely cannot take all the credit for. My husband made this little rolling pin for me. He always makes my little rolling pins that I make for all my seasons. Um, you can buy them on Hobby Lobby and on Amazon, but we just take dowel rod from Walmart and then we took some dowel rod from the Dollar Tree and that is how this one was made. He even took our little Dremel tool and carved out that little heart. So um, all my little rolling pins are always handmade by him and that's just something we like to do. We're a good team you know so first I covered this rolling pin with the castle chalk paint and gray and thought ooh, ooh, what are you doing so then I just decided to do a reverse um distress and then went over it with the plaster then I definitely knew I wanted to make that little heart pop so I took some of the ballet slipper by Waverly and went over it I didn't even try to stay in the lines as you can see dried it and then went back over it with that plaster and then some of that castle chalk paint to make the heart look distressed and blended in but it was still pink then I just took some of this white and um pink gingham ribbon um, I believe I got this from Hobby Lobby or Amazon, one of them. I'll have it linked wherever it was from. And then just attached it, and there you go. That's it. So simple and so cute. Now let's go into the final reveal.
As always, I want to thank you guys for coming along with me today while I made these adorable Valentine's Day DIYs. I always have so much fun creating and sharing them with you. Let me know which one's your favorite or which ones you really, really like in the comments below. Um, I do have one more Valentine's Day DIY video for you guys that is going to come out on Sunday and then we're going to have a bonus video day on Tuesday of a Dollar Tree haul and then we're going to go back into some more DIYs on next Thursday. Let me know what you guys want to see next. I'm not quite ready to jump into Easter. I don't have everything that I need to do so. So we are going to take a little break from the holiday decor. So you do you want to see some farmhouse DIYs or what would you like to see? I'm totally up for a challenge right now. So let me know now in the description box what you would like to see me create and I will do my best to do that for you. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up before you go. It really does help my channel out. And if you aren't already subscribed, I hope you'll go ahead and subscribe and join my little crafty family here on YouTube. It is growing every day and I am just loving it. You guys are amazing. I appreciate each and every one of you and all of your support and constructive criticism. I really do take it all into consideration. Don't forget to go ahead and follow me over on Instagram and Facebook too so you can keep up with some little behind the scenes and a little bit more about my personal life. And I will see you guys very, very soon. Until then, stay safe and stay healthy. I love and appreciate each and every one of you and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys.